Discworld 2 came out just a year after the first game, but the differences between them are huge. The step up in graphics means the game looks like an actual cartoon, and it's surprising to think that such a big change came in such a short period of time. It's only the low resolution the game runs in that dates the graphics at all, otherwise it still looks wonderful today. The quality of the cartoon graphics shouldn't be too surprising, since they were actually done by Anna Barbera. The sequel starts as it means to go on, not so much breaking the fourth wall as failing to build one in the first place. No, it's not dangerous, it's the start of the game. That can't kill us off yet. Making jokes about the obtuse nature of the first game. They've probably halved the number of insane object puzzles for a start. <clears throat> Sorry, I mean clever, natural thinking exercises, of course. And regularly addressing the player directly. Aren't you going to miss all this stuff when they stop making these games? The humour is a lot more successful this time around, less slavishly copying jokes from the book, and instead having more confidence to do its own thing. We've got plenty of demons running around the university in any case. Mostly they study law. Law? Why law? It's the wizard's fault, really. Everyone keeps saying that they want a demon to do their will. Mmm, too much setup and not enough joke there, I feel. Excuse me, I think I have to leave. It might occasionally stray a little too much towards Monty Python territory, perhaps understandably given Eric Idle's return performance as Rincewind. I am not parroting! I am parodying! Parodying! Completely different. Parodying. Remember that, and then we don't get sued. Right. No one is to stone anybody. Until you blow this whistle. We've seen it. It's not necessarily a bad thing, and it captures some aspects of the Discworld very well most of the time. I say, shall we call this one the dead parroting sketch? Watch it. And we get to see a lot more of the disc this time, too. It's not so bound to Ankh Morpork as the first game was, letting you explore further afield. It's nice to get involved in the production of a Hollywood clicky, for example, or to explore locations such as the deserts of Jelly Baby. There's plenty of characters from the books in the game. I'm letting it go for less than Mark Price, and that's cutting me own throat! The regular beggars from the novels make an appearance. Millennium Hand and Shrimp. Alongside new characters such as the punningly named Yuri Jella, who sounds more than a little like Blue Bottle from the Goons. Greetings, my good man! Here, see it now revealed before you the wonders of the Fekir's art! Flashy! Blam! Splinge! Aside from Eric Idle, Rob Brydon and Kate Robbins also return from the previous game to voice many of the other characters, this time with the addition of Nigel Planer. These are still cartoon interpretations of the characters, but the voices still feel a bit more appropriate this time round, and not quite as weirdly mismatched as some of the ones from the first game. Is it? Oh, I haven't been outside. Hello there! Nice day! Eh? What? I still haven't figured out quite why they interpreted Two Flower as David Attenborough in that game. Normal plants grow after the seeds have been planted. With reannuals, it's the other way around. The sequel is also much better in terms of game design. The puzzles make a lot more sense in general. There's the occasional strange puzzle, such as when you have to make a weight heavier by sticking an extra zero on the label but even they have their own brand of cartoonish logic that makes them solvable. Where getting through the first game without a walkthrough feels like it would have taken a miracle, Discworld 2 is a tough game, but very completable, and the puzzles are in keeping with the style of the game. The plot this time around is mainly based around Reaper Man's concept of death having gone missing, mixed in with a fair amount of moving pictures, with the game's finale borrowing directly from that book. Just before that, Rincewind is roped in to replace death, leading to a chance to explore death's domain a little. Unfortunately, one of Discworld 2's flaws is that it starts to feel like they were rushing a bit by the end, probably to hit a deadline given how soon after the previous game this was released. The later chapters are considerably shorter than the earlier ones, and coming in a couple of hours before the end, Rincewind never has to actually do anything as death. 
There's so many possibilities for this concept, but instead it's over in about 30 minutes, and straight into the final act, and it feels like a wasted opportunity. There's worse problems for a game to have than to leave you wishing there was more of it, but it feels like if they'd given it more time they could have turned a good game into a classic. Another oddity that's probably caused by a rushed schedule is near the end where Death is performing on stage. He's doing a little stand-up comedy routine. I only had a skeleton staff. <laughs> but the animations and the screaming crowds clearly seem to imply that he's singing. We do get a great song elsewhere though. Oh, you say I'm just a smelly little imp, and so I say hooray oh, oh You say that I'm a silly little gimp, and I say go away oh. No, not that one. That's death. Say farewell to all your bills. Rip up all your wills. The theme tune is a new song written and recorded by Eric Idle just for the game leading to one of the most memorable game introductions of all time. Of the millions who died No one came back to complain The game does manage to fit in some more easter eggs too, where Rincewind meets himself from the first game, just in case things weren't meta enough already. Who are you? I'm you, just better drawn and animated. Could you please explain to me that thing about butterflies and lampposts? Allow me to compliment the game designers for establishing a logic system completely at odds with a real, rational world. A well-hidden one even references the infamous easter egg from the first game, though this time the publishers were aware of it and forced it to be censored. I want to be the first person in the game to say f What do you mean I've already said it? Alright then, I want to be the first person in a sequel to say f Anyway, nobody wrote in and said they'd heard it in the first game, it must have been too well hidden. Discworld 2 is a huge improvement over the previous game and still holds up as an entertaining comedy adventure now, but there's little here to indicate just how different the next game would be. Three years later, Discworld would be going 3D and tackling the noir detective genre. Now, what about this? This ain't quite my style, sweetheart. <laughs> 